very important points and uh, exactly a month uh, before this we had a forum of tv journalists and and we were just talking about television uh, you know at one point print had this challenge that uh, TV had broken the news and what do you carry next day and then it, it used to read like you know you had already read it you know one how did print navigate that change and added value to the news that you carried next day how did that happen you also said that you know TV uh, just uh, rumbles around six big stories and on a great day otherwise it's like a two story you know they will run the entire 24 hours because the nature of the beast is that but do you also agree that tv generates the impact and that becomes the agenda for the next day okay uh this is not a tv versus print i'm just trying to understand no, I mean, it's a good question can you hear me yeah um you know i have a slightly different point of view uh, if you look at uh, most news channels uh, and even the specialized channels, they have two kinds of information. One is information that is based on real time. So if you're a business channel, for instance, stock market information is real time. You obviously can't get it the previous day. You get it as it happens and TV channels do it. Uh, the same with stuff that is happening right now. So right now, for instance, if there's an accident outside our hotel, uh, one of the best media to capture it will be TV if they have like you know a crew and they get what is happening. But by and large, if you look at the substantial stories that TV plays out in the course of the day, you've already read it in the morning's paper. So rather than print follow TV, the unfortunate thing that happens in our country is that TV follows print when it comes to the big stories. So you've already read the stories. Um, and maybe this is because, uh, again, this is not a print versus TV thing. Some of the smartest people I know uh, work in TV, uh, but uh, uh, maybe it's because they don't invest adequately in research. Maybe it's because they don't invest adequately in uh, specialists uh, who, who can tell them, you know, th th these are the areas that you need to be looking at. Um, so a lot of uh, TV journalists, I have a feeling, end up looking at the morning's paper and saying, like, hey, this has happened, and we've not really covered this. We should. This is an important story, and and. Uh, we need to start looking at this, and and that is exactly uh, what happens. And and you know, uh, 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 there are countless uh, examples to this, uh, especially if it's an exclusive story. Um, and and you know, the the good thing is print still as uh, when you invest in good journalism and you invest in good journalists, uh, and you're uh, willing to invest in. Um, allowing them to travel and spend time on stories, you will get interesting investigations, you will get interesting exclusives, um, and you will get good special stories. And these are the stories that then, you know, TV takes and usually, because, uh, you know, this is a very bad habit in our country, and usually run it as if it's their own story, giving no credit to the original person who did it. Uh, but you know that is par for the course. You know you, you can't expect people to be better than they are. Um, so it, it, it the cycle has actually been reversed in this country. You know, um, and uh, digital is you know it's it's like one big cesspool. I, I know that Musk this morning put out a tweet where he said newspapers report what is on Twitter today, right? Uh, to some extent, yes. Uh, but a lot of times. Twitter amplifies what is in the newspaper and then takes it and builds it and people engage over that news and everything else. Uh, and this is ideally not how it should be. Because ideally it should be the way Ruhel described it. Um, the news is broken on uh, digital media. Uh, TV shows you the news and discusses various aspects of it. And print, and print gives you perspective. It gives you reinforcement. right? And, and that, that is in an ideal scheme. But, but given the fact that uh, you know, many of these platforms are not uh, functioning to their ideal requirements, the truth is actually very, very different. Um, I request the people at the back to be silent. I can just hear the whispers. And you know, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, you know, we see a global phenomena let me name it, of course, uh, like we have to give this example of New York Times and we always hold it as an example of how we turn around the way we look at print, you know, in terms of a business model. 
And then we have this compulsion because our business model is the other way around. So we have to, our news is different. That is a large part of it. Do you see uh, the Indian context changing somewhere down the line? Because of course, print has a certain impact, a certain context, which will be missing on digital, on television. But what, how do you see the print story unfolding in India, making it more relevant, uh, uh, kind of, you know, uh, making its growth possible? Do you see uh, newspapers going the New York Times way in terms of successively, you know, building a, a business around them? The biggest advantage that print has, not just in India, anywhere else in the world, is the fact that print, unfortunately, is still the only medium that believes in newsrooms. Um, and it's the only, me only journalistic medium which believes in shoe leather reporting. It believes in the importance of reporting. It believes in the importance of getting people to where the stories are. Uh, it, it believes in having specialists and beats and everything else. Um, TV does not. So irrespective of whether uh, you are looking at an Indian television channel or an international television channel, you have to look at how many reporters they have. Unless, you know, it's someone like BBC or something. But, but you know, you, uh, you have to look at how many reporters they have. And, and, and the fact is print, in most cases, and if you take the Indian example, it's very, very glaring. Because uh, TV channels invest in anchors. They don't believe in investing in journalists. Um, and uh, they don't believe in investing in reporters. They, they have anchors more than they have reporters. And, and the aspiration for everyone in TV, unfortunately, is to become an anchor. Um, I don't think anyone wants to be a reporter. Um, and without reporters, you, what journalism uh, are you really going to serve? But to answer your questions, I know, I know everyone keeps obsessing about the New York Times and the Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal. Um, and I think it's very, very important to understand that, especially uh, when you're talking about business models. Um, all business models have a temporal element to them. They have a time element to them. They have a time dimension to them. Uh, so all these channel, all these uh, examples that we spoke about, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Financial Times, they started off at a certain period in time. Uh, if they were to start trying to do the same thing now, I'm not sure the business model would work. A lot of it worked for them because, you know, historically you got into a business model, you locked it in there, and, and you're moving on from there. Um, so uh, let me give you this. Uh, you look at the Financial Times. Uh, a lot of the Financial Times subscription, even the digital subscriptions, um, still go to organizations. So if you're a Unilever, for instance, which is again based in London, uh, you will take I don't know, Unilever is a large company. I think you'll probably take a few hundred corporate subscriptions to the Financial Times digitally and give it to your senior managers. Will they still be doing it 20 years from now is my question. Because the entire generation of uh, managers who you have have changed. And, and they're not people who will probably get their information from the Financial Times. I have no idea where they'll get their information from. Uh, but so. I, a lot of these uh, business models are working because they happened at a certain point in time. So to long-winded answer to your question, will it work in India? At this point in time, it won't even work there. So there's no way it's going to work here. So for it to work here, I think you need a new model for India, just like you need a new model for journalism. Of course, and there are models that will work. Um, but, and I've said this, countless times before. A lot of things I'm saying, you know, people who've heard me before will probably think I'm repeating myself, but at least I'm being consistent, right? Uh, um, there is the big digital news conglomerate in India is still waiting to be built. No one has built it yet. Um, the big traditional media companies are still struggling with their models. We have our challenges. We are struggling with our own challenges. But the big digital new age media conglomerate in this country is waiting to be built. Our jury member Sonia Singhji is here. Thank you for coming uh, and joining us. Um, so I have uh, one more question, then I open this forum uh, to some audience questions. You know, India 
as a country, Bharat, you know, we are, uh, you know, positioning ourselves uh, globally uh, as a glo emerging global power. We are the fifth largest economy. But our press is reflecting a more uh, domestic, uh, you know, fo the focus, in our print focus is more of domestic. If you see the world global pages, one or two pages. My point is, uh, how soon do we see our press also having those aspirations of what the country is looking at, you know, and reflect those, uh, you know, the editorial reflects it, you know, that we are also globally, this is our voice globally. How, when do we see that happening in a, at a bigger level? I um, have a vague understanding of what you're asking. I, I have, don't think I've completely understood. So if I'm wrong, you have to, you know, correct me right. halfway through. Um, our challenges are primarily domestic, right? I mean, um, and um, I think Ruhail's question in some ways is, is looking at me and asking me why we are not cheerleaders, right? That's what you're asking. You know, not only, no, my, my question uh, is, we this, are not, say, we are I not mean, global, if you look at, say, uh, again, I'll go to New York Times, you know, they also have global, they, they will say what's happening in Iraq, what is happening in Saudi, what's happening in Dubai, they will have a lot of focus on those, uh, you know, countries as well. But our newspapers don't have global focus. The coverage of global news is minuscule. How does that improve and kind of, you know, reflect that we are also, uh, what do you call, a strong voice in the global uh, scheme of things? Uh, okay, there are multiple ways in which this can be answered, okay? So, so let me start. We all have to get real at some level, right? I mean, we are doing very well as a country, uh, but our per capita income is around $2,500, right? Um, the per capita income of a country whom everyone has beaten up, including my newsroom, uh, Canada, is uh, $54,000, right? Uh, reflects in the fact that many Indians want to leave India and go and live in countries like the UK, Canada, Australia for, for better living conditions. The social and economic indicators, the standard of living, all of these are far higher, right? So the challenges are very significant. Uh, um, so our focus has to be primarily domestic because our challenges are primarily domestic. To the extent that international news is relevant to us, it gets covered um, across platforms. It gets covered in print, it gets covered in TV, it gets covered in digital, but our challenges are primarily local. And we have very significant challenges. We've addressed some of them very well, right? We, we've pulled hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, uh, but pulling them out of poverty is the first step, right? Next step is to move up. Uh, we are still, uh, according to the World Bank classification, a lower middle income country. And the reason why we are a lower middle income country is only because they reclassified the middle income countries to bring the bar thing down a little bit. Uh, so we just moved out from the lowest level to the next level. So our challenge will be to take our per capita up to $5,000 or $6,000. The thing that makes India unique uh, probably more unique than any other country in this world, um, is within India, you have these pockets of phenomenal affluence. So within India, for instance, you, you take the per capita income of, let's say, Germany or the UK. Both Germany and the UK, per capita income will be f close to $60,000. Within India, you have a population of 18 to 20 million people right now whose Per cap, whose, per cap, whose average annual income is at that level. So you have a significant market which is already there, and over a period of time, this market grows. Right? So you are catering not to one homogeneous market, uh, irrespective of whether you're a media company or a company selling cars or a company selling soap, but you're selling to a very, very, very heterogeneous market uh, where the divisions are very stark. So, so some people in India actually live in the first world. Um, a lot of us in this room are quite fortunate because I think we are all inhabitants of that world. Uh, but there are equally um, hundreds of millions of Indians who live in the third world. And, and I think, you know, there has to be progression everywhere. So, so the right. challenges are primarily domestic. So the coverage for us has to be is primarily domestic. We'll take two questions. And I request everyone to please uh, lower the volume because uh, uh, let's go for a, 
uh, audience, a uh, couple of audience questions. Yes, please. Well, the gentleman wish for this fire chat, uh, fireside chat to turn into a collective interactive session. So I must request you to kindly raise your hands with the questions and we and shall please introduce pass yourself. on the mic. Yeah. Uh, can I request uh, people at the back to please uh, be quiet here? Yeah. Uh, sir, a very good morning to you all. Uh, Mr. Sukumar, you rightly said uh, the TV news are going down to the line. Uh, there are a lot of questions on that. If you see any channel, 90% of the news only on the crime. No quality news is there only uh, crime and these news we can't sit see with the family uh, yesterday it was a world heart day you just see you are the witness how many channels focused on that subject i think no one just a small line news was there tomato price is gone 250 rupees per kilo 300 rupees per kilo every channel was showing i think sir has got the question Crime, unfortunately, is a very important, uh, a lot of people are interested in crime, right? I mean, um, if you look at the metro editions that we run in Delhi, Gurugram, Noida, Ghaziabad, Bombay, Pune, people have uh, three obsessions. There are three things that they're obsessed with more than anything else. Uh, and I dare say even in the south, you know, if we had an edition in Bangalore, these are the three things that they would be obsessed with. The first thing is traffic. The second thing is civic issues, especially garbage collection. You, you'll still be surprised at the number of emails I get about garbage, right? I mean, uh, and of course, we put our people on it because it is a big issue. Um, our cities generate far too much garbage, and we have no idea what to do with it. The third thing is law and order or crime. Um, so uh, there is no harm in uh, covering crime. Uh, I just think that. What we have to do is to ensure that there are a lot of important things that are happening and uh, which people need to know about. Exactly. And, and it's important to cover those things equally. And these are in a variety of domains. For, in, for instance, last week, uh, the Environment Ministry uh, pretty much removed the protection that grasslands get in this country. Um, and grasslands are a very key part of the habitat for a variety of reasons. Is that something that uh, people need to know about? Of course it is something that people need to know about. It needs to be explained to them. Um, so your point is well made. You, you need to broad base it. But like I said, the challenge in broad basing it, for, uh, especially for TV channels, is, is probably going to be the economics, much more than anything else. Right? Yeah. You just talk about... Oh, no, sir, so we will take offline. No, no, we'll take more questions. Uh, can we take one last question? I'm around. You yeah. can, you can, you can uh, meet, sir, offline, yes. No problem. Sir, hello, sir. Uh, I am an MC, I am C student, sir. Uh, sir, I have a question, sir. Sir, we know that EZ has less viewership than uh, Hindi news channel with least viewership. And, sir, uh, as per the business magazine, sir, we know that only uh, the biz, uh, who obsessed with business or economy news read only the business journals and business magazines, sir. Sir, can we say that economic journals and uh, uh, business-related journals only confined to the uh, people who are doing business and doing not nothing to impact or improve uh, the people, uh, the mass in general, sir? And what's, how you perceive it, sir? to inform them or to impact them, uh, impact their lives, or how, how you think we can uh, do more for the mass in general? Uh, OK. If you want to rise in journalism, you should not use so many sirs. Okay. Right? I mean, okay, sir. don't keep calling people sir all the time. Okay, sir. Um, I think what we are realizing, and this is probably making it extremely challenging for young people like you, uh, what we are realizing is that um, these days, um, most newsrooms, um, including mine, and, and I'm sure that's true of uh, many other newsrooms, expect their people to have a certain level of proficiency across topics. Right? I mean, they need to understand a variety of things. And, and uh, uh, business and economics is certainly one of them. Um, and it's important, and you mentioned TV channels, and, and I think 
especially in TV, it's very important because you are on screen and you're explaining something which you'll only be able to do if you really understand what's happening. So, so I think um, everyone expects a certain uh, basic level of proficiency. Um, so while I did advocate specialization earlier on, I, I think it's equally important to sort of uh, be versatile enough to have a certain basic level of proficiency across a variety of disciplines. And in India, this includes pretty much anything, right? I mean, sports is such a big part of our lives in this country, sports coverage, and not just cricket coverage. I mean, increasingly, a lot of other sports are in, uh, coming into, uh, you know, coming into the limelight. Um, I, I think people need to understand what's happening across uh, a variety of uh, areas and uh, specialize perhaps in one or two. Right. My, my last question, uh, we'll, we'll take it. Um, there are a lot of students here. Uh, of course, once they complete, they look for jobs. And uh, you know, what are the important things they need to keep in mind if they tomorrow knock at your door uh, with their CV? I mean, what is your advice? What was your message to the students who are present here, journalism students? Well, it's already too late, right? <laughs> you are, uh, um, See, the, the, uh, you have to learn how to put up with things. Because uh, I think, the, and I'm giving you very practical and pragmatic advice, OK? Um, journalism in India, in the first few years of your job, will look like a horrible, thankless job, irrespective of where you're working. Irrespective of whether it is a print newsroom, or a digital newsroom, or a multimedia newsroom, or whatever else. Uh, because you're at the very bottom of the pecking order. Um, the work seems hard. Uh, the salary seems like a pittance. And, and a lot of people can't cope with stress. Uh, now, this is true across professions. When people leave college and they start working, the first thing they have to learn is how to get used to work life. Because college life is different from work life. Some people, of course, never grow out of it, out of being in college. but. You have to get used to a job. You have to get used to the rhythm of uh, what is required in the course of your uh, work. And uh, put up with it for the first three, four years and learn as much as you can. Because you know, I, I think that's how uh, you get into the groove. What I notice happening with a lot of young people who enter journalism is that they get disillusioned very quickly, which is very easy to do. Right, because this is true even in. Uh, it's not just uh, true in uh, India. It's true everywhere. Until uh, five, six years ago, I used to run a, a business newsroom, and and we every year we used to hire from Colombia. And uh, um, I remember the dean there telling me once that. Uh, he was very upset that the best and brightest students were not getting jobs, and they were going and working in e-commerce firms doing listings. Right. Uh, so when you're working in a digital newsroom, a lot of you who are in entry-level jobs will be taking stories from here and there, curating them, giving them a smart headline, putting them out. But I still think you'll be learning, you'll be doing something. It's very easy to get disillusioned with that kind of thing. So, so the only thing I'll tell you, and I'm not going to give you these lofty words of advice, I've told you everything else before in my speech, is to just put up with it for three, four years. Give your organization enough time to give things back to you. It's another problem with this generation. You guys are all far too impatient. Uh, you have to wait for a few years to get what's your due. And then, you know, you, you can start making a mark. Uh, but instead, most people get hassled after six to eight months in the job, and, and, and they jump from this treadmill and go into this other treadmill called public relations. Uh, makes no sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ranganathan, for joining us. It's been great talking to you. Thank you, sir.